and the bird. In this particular tale told by Aesop, he shares that a bird was approached, recognized, and regarded, even revered for its radiant and rare feathers. And it was approached by a trader. The trader said, listen, you have such gorgeous feathers. I know it's going to be a time when you're hungry, so I have some worms here. How about I trade you a worm and you give me one of your feathers? The bird thought, wow, this is a good deal. Deal. That means I will not have to go work in search of me a worm. All I have to do is give up a part of me, and I will receive what I need to satisfy my appetite. And so that's what happened. The bird gave up a part of itself in order to satisfy its appetite without doing any work. Well, dinner time came, and much to the bird's delight, here comes the trader again. Again. And the trader says, listen, I know you enjoyed that worm. I have another fat, juicy worm. How about you give me another one of your rich, rare, and radiant feathers? I'll give you a worm, and you won't have to fly. Well, the bird was too excited. Again, it did not have to work for its worm. All it had to do was give up a part of itself in order to satisfy its appetite. Y'all still not getting this. Well, this bird came every single day to expect this trade, and that's exactly what happened. The next day, here comes the trader, both for breakfast and dinner. The next day, the trader comes back, and for days, this exchange took place as the bird gave up a part of who it was in order to satisfy its appetite because it was too lazy to do the work. Work. Well, my brothers and sisters, by time, some, after some time had gone by, I'm sure you were ahead of me and you already know where I'm going because one day the bird was waiting for the trader to show up and guess what? The trader did not show up. The bird was wondering what had happened. It did not feel like trying to fly and go get some worms until the bird then went and looked according to Aesop in a pond and seeing its reflection, it discovered that it was featherless, it was fat, it was full of worms and could not fly. Can you imagine that the bird was no longer able to do what it is divinely designed to do because in order to satisfy its craving, in order to satisfy its appetite, to get what it wanted, it gave up a part of who it was until finally the bird, my brothers and sisters did not have what it took to do what it was made to do. Why? Because on top of all of that, the bird was so lazy it waited for someone else to do for it what it was already equipped by God to do for itself. I park here parenthetically because how many birds in the house can testify you in your own life have given up a part of who you are trying to satisfy an urge, a craving, an appetite. Y'all don't want to go there, so I keep pushing this thing. Uh, but not only that, you discovered that someone got what was a part of you, and once they got what they came for, you couldn't get them to come back anymore. I'm not even done, uh, because the main thing is here is a bird uh, that has what the wherewithal and the wherewithal to work for itself, but because it gave up a part of 
of itself. And now it cannot fly. The bird, my brothers and sisters, is fat, featherless, full of worms, and cannot fly. I park here parenthetically because in a real sense, the bird was guilty of being lazy. The bird was guilty of having a weak work ethic. The, word, the bird was guilty of not handling business. And all I want to do as I wrap up this series is say everything we've been talking about is cool, but if you don't have a work ethic, if you don't have a sense of get up and go and handling business, one day you may find yourself like the bird, fat, featherless, full of worms, and you can't even go anywhere.